Welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet that you can find an uncensored version of me. Hello, I'm Rachel Bounder, and welcome back to another solo episode. I think I've decided to make solo episodes shorter, just so we don't get bored of each other. So that we don't get annoyed, hold resentment, begin to have a distaste for one another. Even though, I don't know why I would get a distaste from you, you're not doing anything. I'm the annoying one here. Hi. (laughs) Before we start follow-ups, I have a little announcement. If you enjoy me on this podcast, then do I have a little nugget of knowledge for you. You might have already seen it because it's been out. Uh, The info. The info? The info's been out for almost a week now, but the episode, the first one is already out. I started a holiday season special podcast with my sister, Colleen. If you enjoyed her and my episodes together, well, golly gee, Happy holidays to you. (laughs) We are doing, it's called Sweet and Salty Sisters. The acronym is SASS. Well, sassy, y'all. And we put the ass in SASS. I decided, I came up with this concept a couple months ago. I brought it to Colleen. Uh, We've always talked about doing a podcast together. We have so much fun when we're on one another's podcasts. But we're really busy people, and I didn't want to commit to a full new thing and do all the hoopla about it. So I was like, why don't we just do an eight-week special? We can throw it on Patreon, and that way we don't have to deal with whose is whose. Everything can just be split evenly down the middle. We're not going to have to deal with brand deals and ads and sponsorships and stuff like that. So when you watch or listen, there's no interruptions. It's just the sweet, soothing, chaotic sounds of our voice coming to you. So yeah, free to listen, but if you want to watch it, uh, you have to subscribe to the tier. The lowest is five bucks a month. And then there are other tiers that you get bonus footage, you get behind the scenes stuff. We're going to do little Christmas carols, awkward Christmas song, things like that. So if you want to check it out, go for it. Uh, it'll, I believe it'll be on Spotify and I'm going to try and figure out how to put it on Apple as well. But that is that. And if you want to just save as much money as you can, but you still want to watch it, I realized you could just at the on in December buy the five dollar one for one month and you can listen to all eight episodes and then unsubscribe if you want to. And also, if this goes well, we might end up continuing the podcast. It just depends on how much work it is for us. (laughs) It is a lot of work. We have to drive to each other to film. Uh, We obviously have to edit them. And I I spent a while doing all the back end stuff. She spent a while figuring out all the decor and decorations so we put some time into this so if it's worth it to you guys and to us we definitely want to keep doing it but if it's too stressful for us i think we uh, we will just keep it at the holiday special and that's that so yeah now let's now i want to put these i have these blue light glasses people think that my eyesight went bad again no i just got blue light glasses because i realized i stare at the screen constantly my eyes were getting dried out it's not good for you so I've been, I finally found a pair of blue light glasses I like, and I've been wearing them around and I think they're really cute, but I forgot one of the terrible things about glasses. I put the up with this for years is that when you're filming, it reflects the lights. So you can't see my eyeballs. So I will remove my blue light glasses for this as I stare at the screen. Okay. Let's do some follow-ups. Last week, Abigail was on and the consensus is you all love her. I'm glad we're all on the same page then. Everyone loves her voice, love to hear her talk. I felt last episode she talked a lot more than she normally does because we hit on subjects that she loves, traveling, psychology, and books. And following up with that, so many people agreed with our ACOTAR assessment. The first book is not good. And then it's split on if the second book is good or not. A lot of people said the second book wasn't even good to them either. I have a question. If it's through and through, no one thinks the first book is good. How did this series take off? How did people have so much hype around it that the second book was able to get out and not even get out, but then also read? Because I've never read the first series of a book and it'd be terrible and then be like, can't wait for the second one. (laughs) What? That's not a thing. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. I mean, I know I I wrote a little like pish posh book, but there's no way that if my book f- tanked, 
and be like, great, time to put out the second. <laughs> what? That's not how things happen. I don't know how this series took off. I get that a lot of people are more involved in the second and third and fourth book or whatever. Actually, I've heard the third book doesn't even hit. It's like the second and fourth are good. How did it take off? How did people decide to keep investing their time in this? It's beside me. It is beside me. Uh, I am also on the sixth chapter of Fourth Wing now. It's a lot better, guys. There's dragons involved. And you know I love a dragon. That was actually Abby's opening line to me on Hinge. I posted, it said like weird thing about you. And I posted that up until last year, I believe that dragons existed. And that is that was her in. She was like, I'd love to take you uh, for drinks and discuss this further. Something, something, something about dragons. I have an attachment to dragons. So it's a good one. <laughs> also, another follow up from last episode. We talked about how our house we we're realizing might not be cozy and clean enough. And that's why people aren't taking off their shoes and feel it's fine to put their shoes on our coffee table. Also, Abby, after Abby realized after this, I came in and she was like, I put my feet on the coffee table. I, I didn't take my shoes off. And I was like, yeah, it's really easy to do with the way our couch is set up in the coffee table. It's really easy to accidentally put your shoes on the coffee table. And I've done it. She's done it. But our concern is why aren't people taking their shoes off when they come into the house? One, we've never told people to, but two, we're realizing our house isn't inviting enough for people to be like, oh, I should take my shoes off. It's clean in here. It's cozy. I don't need to wear my shoes. So last night I got on a mission to get my Roomba to work. I have never been able to get that thing to work. And I finally got it to work. And that little guy has been working overtime. I already had to buy new uh, little vacuum bags for the refiller thing. There is so much fur and dirt. And I'm just going to have that thing constantly going. It's, it needs to recharge every two seconds. Cause it's like, I'm exhausted. I'm it's, I don't blame it. There's a lot of ground to cover and it barely ever leaves the one room it's in because there's so much to do in that one room. So a couple people suggested Roombas. Yes, I had one. Sorry, I just kicked my camera for those who are watching. I have a Roomba. It just was taking me a really long time to get it set up. Now it's set up and we'll see how things go from here. Okay, let me get a sip of my water. Okie doke. Let's move on to reading a segment from 101 Things. That pissed me off. We're on number 64. We're over halfway done with this book, y'all. What are we going to do when this ends? Maybe the podcast ends. I don't know. <laughs> this is a countdown to the when this podcast ends. Dun, dun, dun. Here it is. 64. You know what pisses me off? What, Rachel? Radio commercials. Does anyone listen to the radio anymore? Is this even relevant? It's probably not. Let's keep reading. Have you ever heard a funny radio commercial in your entire life? I can answer that for you. No, you haven't. <laughs> oh, I'm ruthless, man. I'm ruthless. Radio commercials have to be the most annoying form of advertising out there. And yet stations continue to use them. Well, yeah, because you have to get paid. Okay. Also, what is with those scripts? They're more unnatural than cheese or McCann. And there's that ridiculous sped up fast talking guy at the end who tells you all the things wrong with the product and what it might do to you, like give you oily flatulence. Oh, is that the end? Oh, that was the end. That was the end. That was the end of this. Okay. I, I just was like, I'm, I'm mad. Here are my facts and I'm done. I'm out. I didn't keep going. Okay. I mean... <laughs> I don't know why I have such a beef with radio commercials. Maybe it's because I grew up having to listen to them because we used to not have Bluetooth and hookups for our iPod. We didn't even have iPods. So radio commercials do suck. There are some really bad scripts out there. And also half the commercials, just a guy going, if you take this product, there might be a sign of depression, anxiety, oily poops. Your face might start bleeding. Your eyes might fall out of their sockets. And if you stop taking these abruptly, you will die. <laughs> I, uh, I agree. They're terrible. I've never heard a good one and I've never heard had a radio commercial work on me, but I don't think I need to have that much anger towards it. That just seems unnecessary. If you ask me. Okay. And speaking of unnecessary things, I want to go over the holidays of the day. I always like these. 
I sometimes do them. I sometimes don't. When is this getting, when I, hold on, I looked it up November 6th. Oh, it's Bailey's and the twins birthday. I'm a good aunt. I remembered. I saw it on my calendar. <laughs> so holidays of today. Happy birthday, Bailey. Happy birthday, Wesley. Happy birthday, Maisie, my nieces and nephew. But also what other holidays land on November 6th is national nacho day. Now I got a bone to pick with nachos. Don't get me wrong. Nachos can be delicious, but I, I'm tired of people trying to use just shredded cheddar cheese on nachos and calling that good. It's not good because that cheese is only good for about 45 seconds and then it's ruined. Also, no towering the chips. We got to let them spread out thin across a baking pan. Also use nacho cheese. Give me that good ooey gooey spready cheese. Do not sh- bake cheese. Don't bake nacho. That's disgusting. Get out of here. I'm mad about it. I'm mad because I grew up eating Taco Bell nachos. The Nachos Bell Grande. Nacho Supreme. That shit slaps. That is what a nacho should be. Don't, don't be like, it's nacho night. I've shredded some cheddar cheese and baked it. That's disgusting. That's foul. I don't even eat this stuff anymore because I can't have dairy. Oh, I'm going to go on a little rant. An itty bitty little rant real quick. When I was, if, also if you watch my vlogs, I'm sorry, you're hearing a lot of repeated stuff, but I don't know who's watching what, all right? And I have things to say that no one asked for, so I'm going to say them. Um, When I was in Europe, shout out to Europeans, my stomach was peachy perfect the entire time, except one time we ate at one restaurant that made me a little uneasy afterwards. But I was fine. I never felt gassy. I never felt bloated. Like, I don't remember farting in Europe. And I'm, a, I'm used to being flatulent, okay? I'm not trying to be gross. I'm trying to just spit facts right now. So the entire time in Europe, I was eating dairy, all the pasta, fried foods, sauteed foods, oily, fatty, didn't matter. I was going at it. Okay. I consumed everything but actual meat. I had fish. I always eat fish. Okay. So right when I felt gross at that one restaurant, I was like, oh my God, my stomach is kind of off. I, and then I came, I came to the realization, oh, I I felt really good this entire trip. And we were at the end of the trip when this happened. And then I took note that the next few days, no matter what I ate or how much I ate, I always felt good. And we were walking and like, I never felt sluggish. Now I got home and I was like immediately like, okay, I'm going to cut back on dairy. And before I had left, I've been adding a little dairy into my diet to get rid of my lactose intolerance because it's annoying when I accidentally consume something and then my stomach hurts for an entire day and it ruins me. So I had made a conscious effort to put a little butter here, to have a bite of this there, not making a full meal out of it, but just slowly microdosing my lactose. And it worked. My stomach really wasn't hurting at all when I consumed dairy. And then we got back and I was like, okay, I'm off the dairy again, but I would still have a bite of things here or there. Guys, my stomach, I have, I'm so bloated and I am so gassy and I feel gross and I've, I'm like on the edge of getting heartburn again. I'm like, what the hell is in our food? Get it out. Please stop it. I've had to completely cut out dairy. There was one night. Oh my God. I got up at 3 a.m. to walk around my living room. I couldn't even pass gas, but I was so bloated. It hurt so bad. My, I, it felt like something hard was just in my stomach and it wasn't moving. And I was like m- trying to do pos- different positions. I could tell I was, I was gassy, but it was so far up, I guess. It had no desire to come out anytime soon. I know this is a foul conversation, and I, I really don't mean to be this gross. I've actually been trying to cut back on my, I'm sorry, I kicked the camera again, on my talk of bodily functions. Cause I don't know, as I've gotten older, I don't think it's rude, but I know it's not everyone's forte. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I am just 
in utter shock of how gross the food here makes me feel. And Abby's going through the same boat. She's like, yeah, I'm super bloated and it's not fun. My stomach kind of just like always hurts. So I'm on this huge healthy thing where like I, I'm completely cutting out dairy again until I'm ready to microdose it. I'm not giving myself any sugary or fried foods, which are already bad for me. But the fact that I can't even have like a bite of them because I don't go out and buy a deep fried anything. I don't get a serving of French fries to myself because I, I like to live a healthier lifestyle, but I totally believe in, yeah, have a French fry or two. Eat a couple chips here and there. There's nothing wrong with that. Like that's not going to make or break your health or your body image or whatever. I'm not going to deny myself that crazy. But the fact that even if I have a little bit of that stuff, I feel like shit, get out of here. I'm pissed about it. I'm mad. So I've just, I've noticed that. Okay. How did that, where did we get to that? How did we get to that? Was I talking about nachos? Whatever. We'll move on. I'm just saying the food here, we should sue just all of America. The FDA, you're failing us because clearly stuff is being put in our food. That is not good for us. Not at all. Okay. Moving on other holidays that are November 6th. Sorry. Just getting sidetracked here. Uh, it's National Advent Calendar Day, and I wanted to give this a proper nod because it is time to go get your Advent calendars. Don't wait till December 1st because that's when you're going to want one and you're not going to have one. So it is November 6th. Go order your Advent calendars. Go buy your Advent calendars if that's your jam. Let's not procrastinate this year. Let's get it done. And then also, I saw that it's National Stress Awareness Day, and I have to say to that, I think we're all aware of how stressed we are. I think we're very well aware and do not need anyone shining more light on that. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Okay, guys. Today, I didn't want to read out of my other assholes. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it for another, just one more episode without it. So you guys can't get mad at me. Oh, you know what you do is read out of my other assholes. Well, I find them funny. Now, don't I. I like to judge other people. Except I never actually end up judging them. I'm always like, I need more information. I can't make a proper judgment unless I have all the facts and figures in front of me. But today I want to do something. My my friend Cedar, when I was filming with Abby, I said, what do you want us to talk about? And she commented on the Insta post about it. And she said, talk about your dreams. And I don't know if she meant our aspirations in life or the literal dreams we have. And I'm taking it as the literal dreams that we have in our head when we're sleeping. If you know me, you know I hate dreams. Because I think if they're good, you're upset when you wake up that it's not true. If they're bad, they ruin your sleep. If they're boring, they ruin your sleep. The best night of sleep is when you have no dreams. And I can't get away from them. It's a constant dream in my head. I daydream like crazy. I don't want a night dream too. I'd rather daydream than night dream. And I've always wanted to deep dive into dreams and what they mean. And what's annoying is I Googled dr- meanings of dreams. And the thing that comes up, this is AI. So it's all the knowledge in the world came up with this. It says there are several theories about what dreams mean, but there is no consistent scientifically proven explanation. And that pisses me off. How, how do we not know? We can study brains. We can talk. Why aren't we figuring out what dreams mean? Because a lot of people say when you have dreams about your teeth falling out, it means you have no control over your life and you're wanting control. I I really just think it means I'm obsessed with my teeth and I'm really scared that my teeth are going to fall out. (laughs) And then I keep having repeated dreams about being late to class or finding out at the end of the semester that I have to go to a final to a class I never attended and I'm going to fail. Why do I keep having these dreams? Clearly I'm stressed. But there are multiple different theories about dreams. There is activation synthesis theory. And this theory suggests that dreams are the brain's attempts to make sense of the brain activity that occurs during sleep. The brain uses memories to interpret the brain's signals and impulses that occur during sleep, which can lead to dreams. So your brain starts doing things while you're sleeping and your brain's trying to understand what it's doing by putting in memories. I never missed a final. I never missed a class. 
I don't know why my brain is being like, well, what if you did? <laughs> I've, I've never had a full tooth just fall out while I was talking as a grown adult. Why does my brain go, but what would happen if it did fall out? What? Why is it doing that? And then there says, my therapist has also said this, that dreams are unconscious desires. Some believe that dreams represent unconscious desires and wishes. For example, dreams about flying may represent a desire for freedom. There is no unconscious desire in my brain to lose teeth or fail at school. (laughs) I have no desire for that. I get that if you're like referring to flying dreams, but even my flying dreams, I can't fully fly. Like there's always like I jump and I sort of get off the ground and I like jump for a really long time, but I'm never fully flying. What does that mean about me? I get that if you're talking about like maybe sex dreams, like adult content dreams, that might might be an unwanted desire or an unconscious desire, but I don't know. And then there's wish fulfillment. Some dreams may appear to be wish fulfillment. Nope, still don't wish for my teeth to fall out or to show up to a class with a final that I never knew I had and never studied for. That doesn't seem like something I want. I've also heard that you can't dream of something you don't know about. So you're, I was told you can't dream what happens after death because we don't know but I don't know if that's true because you can only dream about what you can like kind of can conceptualize for lack of a better word. And then it says processing information is another dream theory. Dreams may help consolate and process information gathered during the day. For example, students who dream about what they have been studying may have a better understanding of the material the next day. None of this explains my teeth. None of it. That is a fear. I feel like dreams are a a little like, fuck you. They're just like, "Mm, you're stressed during the day. Let's stress you out even more at night. And then it says other types of dreams include normal dreams. These dreams are often reflections of your daily lives, thoughts, and concerns. Daydreams. These occur while you're awake and represent a kind of escapism. Escapism. I don't know what escapism means. And then nightmares. These vivid dream sequences can involve distressing events and often wake a person from sleep. Nightmares can be a sign of stress, trauma, or a sleep disorder. I had a lot of nightmares as kids, as a kid, and sometimes I still have nightmares. It's not fun. Why? I want to know why. And I'm mad that no one has done for the research to figure this out. What are you doing? Trying to cure cancer? Yeah, stay on that. Get rid of Alzheimer's, please do. I'd rather you solve that than my dreams. But I'm still confused. All right. So I'm reading a medical journal now. It says, why do we dream? Doctors have several working theories, but no one knows for sure. And I'm mad about it. As to why we dream. For starters, Dr. Dreyup says you also tend to dream more in REM sleep. Additionally, dreaming during this stage is associated with Consolidation of memories, she adds. Oh my God, Dr. Dreyup is a woman I love. The dreaming may represent important cognitive functioning. Brain activity that occurs when you're dreaming is similar to the memory processing brain activity we experience when we're awake. Oh, so you have a healthy brain if you dream. I might be the healthiest brain alive. I don't know why I'm so bitter right now. I don't know why I chose this topic, but it just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm someone that doesn't, like things that I can't understand or make sense of. Like, don't get me started on emotions. I understand why we feel them, but I cannot stand when I'm feeling a negative emotion. I process it and I'm like, okay, I'm mad at this. I don't want to be, I don't like, I don't want to be, let's use like uh, a, a common, a common emotion that people feel but like don't really want to is jealousy. Cause when we're mad at someone cause they hurt our feelings, like we want to be mad. We want to have the right to be mad. When someone hurts our feelings, we want to be sad. When we feel happy, we want to feel happy. But like, let's, let's talk about jealousy. If you're like, I don't want to be jealous. I don't want to see my significant other talking 
to someone and that, and I know that nothing's happening, but I still feel like a sense of jealousy. Maybe that's anxiety, insecurity, whatever it is. Okay. So there's like anxiety, jealousy, insecurity. Sure. Any of those. And you're like, I know that my significant other is not flirting and they're not going to leave me. And I am secure in that. I don't want to have these feelings anymore. And then you still have them? The fuck? What's with that? Ridiculous. Or even anxiety. Where you're like, I know this is going to be fine. I'm not going to stress about it. This is like, I'm going to go in, do the thing. Nothing bad's going to happen. It's going to be fine. It's okay. And then you still have anxiety? The hell? I've, I've never, even there's like times of like anger or I've been like, I'm unrightfully mad right now. I have no, no reason to be this upset. I'm going to, I'm going to act like everything's fine because it either ruins my night or, um, I could have could continue having a good night just depending on how I act in this. So I'll act fine and I'll, you know, whatever. But then I still have the, the feelings of anger. Get out, leave. That's ridiculous. What is our brain doing? It stresses me out that we actually know so little about the brain. What's it doing? Tell me, why am I dreaming? Why am I having, why am I having emotions? I feel like it should be like, once you guess the right answer, it's like, ding, 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 it's over. Like, that's how I feel like emotions should be. I'm like, I am sad because of this, this, and this. And I now I am okay with that. And I don't want to be sad anymore. It should be like, ha you got the right answer. Game over. Emotions done. <laughs> I understand that I'm describing a robot. <laughs> I get it. But what the fuck? I just think that's crazy. Like when people are going through breakups and they're like, oh, just get over it. Like they were a piece of shit. And they're like, I know they were a piece of shit, but I'm still sad. That's bonkers that you're like, I don't want to be sad over this person. I know they were terrible and I want to move on, but it's like literally you're, it just has to be like time for the feelings and the, your thoughts of that person to fade away for your feelings to fade away. That is insane. That doesn't make sense to me. I love psychology because it let me understand people and why they did certain actions and how they respond to things and how to talk to people better if I need to have an actual adult intense conversation with someone, I feel I am very equipped to do so. And I'm very well equipped to understand my emotions and why I'm having them and to understand like my own past and my own trauma and how that affects me in situations that shouldn't like a normal person wouldn't have this reaction. And I'm understanding why I have it and I have control issues and I'm aware of it because I want to control my emotions <laughs> and I can't it's okay to have your emotions. It's okay that you can't control them, but what you can control is how you respond to them and how you respond to other people. And that's a big thing I had to learn, but gosh, darn it, take away my dreams. And when I figure out my emotions, I would like them to be taken away. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read a little bit more. Dr. Dreyup, the woman says, when you're experiencing more stress or anxiety, you tend to dream more as well. Okay. National Stress Awareness Day, I'm aware. So not only do I have to feel stress during the day, but then when I go to sleep, my body's response to that stress is more stress. It's like I hate myself, but I actually love myself. Oh, the types of dreams you have also change. Dr. Dreyup says that nightmare and stressful dreams, for example, about being chased or being in a frightening situation are also common when you're stressed. That's one of the theories of why we dream. Our dreams might help us process and manage our emotions. Okay. So are you saying that my body is like, you are not managing your day to day. You are stressed all the time. You think you're stressed? I'll show you stressed. It stresses you out in your dreams so that when you come back to reality, these, the day to day is actually less stressful. Cause you're like, oh, I just woke up from being chased by a man and my ability to kick left. And every time I tried to kick him, my foot wouldn't get off the ground. And that was stressful. And I couldn't run very far. And I thought I had the ability to fly, but every time I tried, I just fell on my face. I am so glad I'm back to just my day to day and no longer dreaming. Really? Our dreams are just our bodies and brains saying, you don't know how good you have it. Let me show you. 
That's like evil parenting. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to keep reading. Interestingly enough, Dr. Dreyup notes that researchers have found that people living in certain places might have similar nightmare visions, although they aren't quite sure why. There seem to be some cultural influences on dreams, she explains. For example, the same type of dream might be had more common in Germany. What? Why? That makes me angry. It means like there's more that we literally don't know. Like, the more research we have on it, the more confused I get. Ugh. I'm going to keep reading. It's getting me angry. <laughs> I'm so mad. What do dreams mean? Determining what dreams mean is a big question. One that doctors, researchers, and scientists are still trying to answer. But Dr. Dreyup stresses that dream interpretation is subjective. That's always what I tell people. The meaning that you ascribe to the dream is going to be much more meaningful than anything ascribed to the dream. I ascribe to the dream. Oh, sorry. They put like a weird, a, a ta her eye in a italicized. That was weird. She says, because it's probably something from your life that's represented in that dream. Y'all, I do not know why my teeth falling out, the school and... I literally have so many dreams where like someone's attacking me and I go to kick them and like my foot just will not make contact. It's just like stuck to the ground and apparently punching's out of the question. I always have to try and kick them in the balls and I literally can't get my foot off the ground. Why? Why? That makes me so angry. I wish there was a pill to take to make it so I didn't have to dream anymore. Because guys, I'm aware of my stress. I'm aware of my trauma. I don't, need re I don't need to be reminded every day. Oh, and then it says, what causes nightmares? Nightmares are commonly associated with a variety of other conditions and events as well, such as PTSD, alcohol, stress, psychological disorders, medication withdrawal, addressing untreated sleep apnea. And then it says, is it normal not to dream? It's a rare condition called, oh, some big word where people don't dream at all. I want that. Oh, it says the dream loss occurs following a focal brain damage, typically a stroke. I don't want that. <laughs> I go back. I don't want it. Okay, so if I no longer dream again, it means I have a brain disorder. <sighs> Most people dream, it's just sometimes people don't recall them. People will say, I don't dream at, not at all because I don't sleep well. That's not necessar necessarily the case. Just because you don't have a dream doesn't mean that you're not dreaming. Uh, we usually don't remember our dreams unless we're awoken from them. At the end of the day, however, dream interpretation is a big mystery yet to be solved. Okay, wait. So if you're abruptly woken from your dream, you're more likely to remember it versus you just like gradually wake up naturally like little Cinderella, stretch out your arms and yawn and birds come take your covers off of you. So I shouldn't be waking up to an alarm is what you're saying. I won't remember that I had a dream if I wake up to an alarm, if I don't wake up to an alarm. Gosh darn it, I'm gonna learn how to wake up naturally. Let's Google it. How to train yourself to wake up without an alarm. That's how fast I write, by the way, how I type, how fast I type. How to wake up without an alarm. Harness the power of morning light. Well, I can't do that. Abby d likes to sleep in complete darkness. She wants blackout shades, no light shining anywhere. If I could, and when I do when she's not here, is I sleep with my, my blinds open so that I do wake up with the sun. I really do like that. Harness the power of morning light. Stimulate dawn. Keep a consistent schedule. This sounds like a lot of work. Dim the lights before bed. Too much artificial light at night can delay circadian rhythm and make it more difficult to, to wake up early without an alarm. About two hours before bedtime, start dimming the lights and avoid bright light from TVs, mobile phones, and other screens. Blue light exposure in the evening can be especially disruptive to sleep by suppressing melatonin release, which is a natural hormone that regulates our circadian rhythm. Okay. Avoid sleep disruptors. Caffeine. Sorry. Alcohol. Meh. Nicotine. I don't do that. Heavy meals. Stop attacking me. Stop attacking me. So it seems I do all the things besides the nicotine that would uh, uh, disrupt my sleep. <laughs> rude. Absolutely Rude. All right, guys, I'm going to I'm going to end it there. I said I was only going to do a 30 minute episode. This one a little over, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out 
if you want to. You don't have to. I don't care. Uh, Sweet and Salty Sisters. Uh, episode released Monday. There's going to be new episodes every Monday from now through December. And yeah, we're having a lot of fun with it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please subscribe here. Our next guest will be Joyous Joy. If you have anything you want to say to her, go ahead and say it. Get a little saucy. Get a little saucy in the comments. See what I care. We're sweet and salty on my other podcast. And this one, we're just a little saucy. I don't know. I hope... None of you have dreams tonight, unless you really like them. There are some people that really like dreams. I don't understand you. Maybe you're not having terrifying dreams like me. I don't know. I mean, there's some people that dream about their their relatives that have passed and they like get to see them again. And I think that's really cool, but also like kind of sad. A lot of people say like past lives and spirits and ghosts and ancestors and stuff come to them in dreams. What are y'all doing before bed? How do I harness that shit? <laughs> it's like... But I'm also like, I've closed myself up to that stuff because I don't want to mess with it. So maybe that's why I'm having just weird dreams because I don't open myself up to something else. Who knows? But I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Blaze boy, you were a delight. You didn't fart or make noises or get up once. Good job, buddy. I love you all. And Merry Christmas. It's November. I am doing Vlogmas, by the way, posting, vlogging and posting daily from now till the day after Christmas. So go check that out. I'll check. Ha ha. Bye. Bye. Check that out over on my vlog channel. Love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye! Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!